Thank you, Ihan. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, in the interest of perhaps getting more uh, Q&A afterwards, probably make three points uh, with regard to uh, <clears throat> what sort of the dynamics uh, that would shape the kind of uh, post-COVID world that will emerge later on. I agree with Jomo that actually there's no new normal yet. I think the normal is, is emerging. And what would be some of the considerations that we ought to think about uh, uh, to shape our response uh, 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 with regard to the, the things that would actually matter in terms of uh, shaping that new normal. So one of the things that actually would definitely sh uh, shape uh, the new normal uh, mindful that actually the world has gone through a, a global financial crisis in 2008-2009 and one of the solutions uh, uh, to that crisis was a pumping of uh, lots of liquidity into the system and uh, that further exacerbated the, uh, the financial, so-called financial, financialization of uh, uh, the economy but it also uh, has uh, neutralized uh, monetary policy as a way of actually managing the thing managing uh, the economies by in, by elevating the position of central banks but basically when you use liquidity as a way to to manage a crisis in 2008-2009 you basically elevate the position of the uh, the uh, central banks all over the world uh, uh, to to play uh, the role of injecting more liquidity into the system through all kinds of uh, leveraging on the balance sheet using quantitative easing and so on so there's a whole bunch of um, liquidity and uh, this thing feeds fed through uh, capital markets but also it, it actually has a lot of uh, impact on 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 the on real the real economy by way of consumption so they there was this expansion of credit and lowering of price of capital in that sense uh, that fed through on uh, uh, the asset uh, financial asset markets initially actually put the floor to it, but actually then uh, raised uh, the price of late, the prices of asset, uh, financial assets. But at the same time, it provided lots and lots of uh, 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 cheap credit, actually, that fueled a lot of the consumption. So what we've seen, actually, we've seen on one hand, and this is the, the reason for why the inequality that we see uh, today, this is even before the COVID thing, um, uh, uh, that on one hand, you get the, 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 the liquidity pumping up prices of asset, asset prices at the same time, uh, you you have this concern mainly on the bottom half or, or, or people who actually uh, consume not so much by income growth but uh, by uh, credit uh, uh, growth. Now, uh, while this thing is going on, you have global trade going hoo -ha, hoo -ha, all over the trade has been growing uh, quite significantly, but then investments have been uh, put in place to fuel this very phenomena of actually uh, 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 satisfying this demand that has been created globally, um, uh, uh, partly fueled by credit by people in the lower half of the income. So this actually exacerbated the uh, the inequality that we, we we we've seen even before before this. <clears throat> but this inequality, uh, uh, this bubble, we knew it was gonna it was gonna break. Uh, but this COVID nine this this pandemic actually uh, basically poke a big, uh, a big uh, thing in the balloon and actually broke the thing. Now, what we see again as a response uh, to, to, to the pandemic globally, uh, it's not just the, right now, I mean, Jayati alluded to governments uh, going into fiscal expansionary uh, policy, but actually there was also monetary uh, <coughs> loosening up very much the way that, uh, that happened in uh, 2008. Uh, interest rate was driven almost to nothing. Uh, 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 but there was fiscal expansion, uh, but but this whole uh, dynamics uh, uh, that created a capacity to 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 cater to demand of a certain uh, uh, nature and certain size um, post COVID or, or or during this whole thing, uh, it needs a readjustment. I think the the installed capacity from investments globally uh, to to create this uh, supply side to fuel the demand side that actually existed then uh, is, is going to be a huge mismatch. And this mismatch, mismatch is one of those things 
uh, that will have to be taken into account in, in policy response. This is a, a global sense uh, 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 when countries, individual countries or groups of countries uh, respond. So this, this rebalancing uh, uh, between the gap of installed capacity and, 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 uh, and uh, hollowing out of consumption arising from this global uh, pandemic. Now, this, that actually will, will shape this new emergence of this new normal. It's actually alluded to earlier by, by Jomo as well. It's actually the, to what extent will the, uh, uh, what we've seen in the last 30, 40 as global trade uh, expand, uh, the atomization of supply chains, uh, especially, uh, will reverse itself again. Uh, now that that is significant, and one of the things that perhaps have uh, heightened because of the pandemic is actually <clears throat> the um, uh, risk management uh, would entail that uh, people might perhaps want to consolidate some of those things, uh, uh, localize it, originalize it, as opposed to spreading it out uh, globally. Because we we saw in the during the the uh, the, the early much and, uh, uh, and chains were, were disrupted and uh, maybe the, uh, people who are managing risk actually would like to uh, do something uh, about that and that would create uh, 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 companies actually turning or uh, localizing some of the supply chain so that's that's at the uh, global level so what, what does what does it mean to to to, to a country like Malaysia you know, briefly now uh, the the way to look at this is actually to to recognize that actually uh, uh, quite a bit of what we can do uh, or, uh, is outside of our, our, our control. If you think of, uh, if you take a two by two matrix, for example, on one hand, put uh, ownership of uh, factors of production uh, on one axis and say, um, uh, uh, so uh, with the local uh, factors of production content, and uh, 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 foreign uh, content. And then on the other hand, whether you have uh, an export market or you have a, a domestic kit. So you have four boxes uh, of, uh, say, you know, uh, something like commodities, for example, uh, palm oil, uh, oil and gas, and those sort of things would be local stuff, local inputs, men uh, for an export market. Then you have uh, uh, manufacturing, for example, which is actually foreign capital, largely foreign capital, foreign technology, but for export markets. And then uh, you have um, uh, the larger uh, real estate, construction, and, 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 and even parts, part of tourism, retail, distribution, trade, and so on, which are actually local content and for local market. And, and then you have things uh, uh, not big, where uh, outside of manufacturing, uh, maybe the financial sector, insurance, and a bit of logistics and telecommunication, where there are a foreign presence, but it is for domestic market. Now, the 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 mindful of what I said earlier. Now, the response uh, to 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 Malaysia's response will have to take into account this. It's a four quadrants, right? We can't do much uh, uh, to influence. Uh, domestic demand. Right? That, that's true. So we can't do much in terms of uh, affecting, affecting uh, 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 demand for the, the kinds of manufactured uh, goods that we do. We can't do much to influence uh, oil and gas or palm oil and so on. So what we can do and what we have done uh, post the relaxation of the MCO and so on is actually to reactivate uh, to get uh, the domestic side of the economy uh, restarted. But the, the economic side of the the, the domestic side of the economy tend to be uh, more services, uh, you know, distributed trade, food, these sort of things, uh, and not much of uh, the, 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 the bigger ones. The bigger ones are actually meant for, domestic, uh, for, for, for export market and the commodities and also the manufacturing. So uh, what we have seen, that what we have gone through is actually we, we can't do much on the top side, on the, on the, on the, uh, the uh, export market, but we have done a bit on trying to reactivate and put a floor on, on the economy by putting something uh, on the domestic side of the economy. So that, that's what we, we have done. Now, that uh, uh, raises a lot of issues in terms of how we're going to respond uh, by way of jobs. And I want to end uh, with this job business because your seminar, your, your conference is about jobs. Now, uh, if firms, uh, uh, 
uh, recover uh, to do the same things that they were doing, then uh, that's a good thing. But if, if the economy recovers by doing other things, then all this install capacity, especially the ones for the export market uh, that's already been in place, uh, will, will, will remain uh, 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 unused, un unemployed. And therefore, unemployment, I think, will be the biggest problem that this country has to face uh, in terms of uh, recovering uh, from this uh, pandemic. Now, uh, can, can we create new, new things that uh, firms would be able to uh, employ new people uh, 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 in the next uh, 12 to what, 24 months? That's a big question. Now, if that doesn't happen, if the global economy recovered, uh, our firms uh, uh, get back to do, doing what they were using for, then that is that is just mopping up. That's good. That mops a lot of the unemployment that was created before. We have a we have a fifteen what fifteen point fifteen and a half uh, uh, a labor market, right? Grows at about what three hundred over thousand, and we should be mindful that uh, statistically we have a five percent unemployment rate, but economically we have a thirty over percent unemployment rate because our labor it is actually below 70 percent so given that whatever 67 uh, percent uh, uh labor market uh, uh five percent are unemployed uh, some of those uh, 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 were during this pandemic you're gonna get an hundred over thousand ones uh, so the real question is like, uh, do we have the ability to create New activities that would the ones that got and became right, and the ones uh, that are also coming online. So in terms of uh, policy response, uh, I think uh, uh, the pivot one is to provide a base uh, social safety net for just to keep people uh, 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 literally uh, because you have to be you know it's not just informal but uh, there's a bunch of people who, who, who are not even in the labor market uh, uh, 30 over percent of, of people in the working age and not in the labor market per se so what about them and what about those who are being displaced uh, unemployed statistically uh, what to do with them and what to do with the ones that are coming uh, on, online so this 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 jobs business is, is actually if i were you know actively in this thing I, 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 it will keep me uh, awake at night so what should be the kind of state response to, to these sort of things. So the, unfortunately, and this is the reason uh, this pandemic is interesting, a lot of countries uh, at a time when, when we need to come together and do things together and do things in a very definitive way, a lot of you know, countries are, are suffering from political instability of sorts. And that includes Malaysia, because we don't have a very uh, uh, a strong government and strong government, uh, the lack of strong government cannot take decisive uh, uh, decisions to do difficult decisions so that's one of the things that we we have uh, we should do better i don't know whether how to solve that problem that's a political problem but uh, the other thing that we can do uh, uh, that i would like to put forward here uh, before i end is actually to say um, we can do better uh, uh, working together um, and the things that we have not done I mean, uh, we, we, we can't do much in terms of what china is doing what the u.s is doing, Russia is doing, but we can do a lot better uh, to mitigate uh, these guys, these giants, uh, continental economies, uh, uh, by 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 working uh, better at the regional level or even at a bilateral level or still bilateral level, you know, like northern Sumatra and northern northern uh, Semenanjung, the Bimiaga thing in 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 in, in, in the in Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, uh, these are the kinds of uh, new ways of actually looking at uh, um, complementarities and much comparative advantage actually to not just create new new things that would employ people but also to mitigate the risk against uh, the new so-called order that uh, post the pandemic and you can bet your bottom dollar that big economies the large economies Will, will feature uh, uh, prominently in the in the new new uh, uh, political order that will emerge. So uh, let me just quickly then recap. Uh, like, and I think uh, we ought to be mindful.
full of 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 some of the big trends that already there in terms of liquidity in terms of uh, capital in terms of uh, inequality in terms of the uh, itemization the splitting up of uh, supply chains and and uh, world trade i think that's a big mega mega trend that's that was shaping things and will be will shape the the kind of things uh, that we see and we should be mindful in terms of our response and not too much navel gazing in terms of uh, you know what we want to do because there's a, there's another part I mean, at least half the economy is actually dependent on external demand so we ought to be uh, 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 streamlining our response to uh, anticip anticipating what the external demand uh, ought to be and then thirdly is actually we, we can't do much as economists and but politicians although i was once a politician uh, but we need to look better into into uh, deeper into this issue of uh, uh, regional, uh, not not ASEAN, you know, ten ten member states kind of thing, but even bilateral, trilateral kind of uh, uh, working together. So I'll end with that, uh, Yihan. Uh, look forward to some questions. Thank you.